Performing a risk analysis for a company? Here's what you need to know. Everyone in the financial world knows that the game works on two factors, chance and risk. In today's video, we're going to be diving deep into the subject of risk management and all that it entails, what they are, why they're important, and how to complete them. So let's get right in. The concept of risk is made of two variables, the probability of something going wrong and the negative consequences if it does. And well, even for seasoned professionals and analysts in the field, figuring out the risks involved can sometimes be quite a difficult task, let alone perform and successfully manage one. And if you're hit with a risk Mack truck, one that you hadn't predicted and planned for, then the company's reputation, capital costs, and time can be lost. And conversely, if you overestimate things like costs and other risks, you will be creating unnecessary chaos. This is why risk analysis is almost an essential tool. It's basically the process of identifying, assessing, and controlling threats to an organization's capital and earnings. These threats, or risks, could be rooted in a vast variety of sources, including financial uncertainty, legal liabilities, strategic management errors, accidents, and natural disasters. IT security threats and data-related risks and the risk management strategies to alleviate them have become a top priority for digitized companies. As a result, a risk management plan increasingly includes companies' processes for identifying and controlling threats to its digital assets, including proprietary corporate data, a customer's personally identifiable information, PII, and intellectual property. It is a fact that almost every business and organization faces the risk of unexpected, harmful events that can cost the company money or cause it to permanently close. Risk management allows organizations to attempt to prepare for the unexpected by minimizing risks and extra costs before they happen. And thus, risk analysts' work is to identify possible hazards within a workspace and implementing measures of control to enforce damage control. And let us clarify, there are multiple types of risk assessments involved applicable for various fields. These include fire risk assessments. Fire safety management procedures are required to be established in all workplaces, including a suitable and sufficient fire risk assessment. Manual handling risk assessments should be conducted in any workplace where an employee may be at risk from injury and or ill health through the need to lift, carry, and move loads. Display screen equipment, DSE, risk assessments are required to be completed in workplaces where employees and others are using computers, laptops, etc. COSHH risk assessments are required within workplaces where hazardous substances are stored, used, or manufactured. But let's break down the process of risk assessment into steps so you know everything you need to know about the task. The first step is to systematically identify the risk. This means assessing the operating environment that your business is in and see what risks it may be exposed to. These can range from legal risks, environmental risks, market risks, regulatory risks, and much more. And your goals as an analyst should be to identify as many of these as you can. On a corporate scale, there is usually a risk management solution employed in place in the organizational framework of the company, and what this does is promote transparency, meaning that these risks are now visible to every stakeholder in the organization with access to the system. Instead of this vital information being locked away in an officiated report that has to be requested via email, anyone who wants to see which risks have been identified can access the information in the risk management system. The second step is to analyze the risk, scoping out the magnitude of the risk that has been identified. And another thing that is more often than not overlooked by analysts is that you need to form a correlation between different variables of the company and the risks that are associated with it. Then you have to see how many business functions the risk actually impacts. For instance, there are some that might paralyze a business, whereas there are some that just will be accounted as just little bumps in the analysis. And when a risk management solution is put to be incorporated, a crucial step is to map the risks to different documents, policies, procedures, and business processes. This ensures that you have all the risks assessed in hindsight and mapped risk framework that would already have evaluated risks. The third step would ideally be calculating the overall risks and then ranking them according to priority. And the pre-existing risk management frameworks already have categories depending on the severity of the risk. For instance, a risk that might cause a slight inconvenience may be ranked low on the scale, while a risk that can plausibly bankrupt the company ranks high on the risk assessment scale. This is by far one of the most important tasks in doing a risk analysis 
Because the hierarchy of risks allows you to have a more holistic approach, having a much deeper view into the strengths and weaknesses of the organization. This could help the company approach bigger and more dangerous problems first, stabilizing the status quo, whereas the less threatening tasks would be done by the lower level management, not needing higher supervision. You then move on to the flesh of the task, which is treating the risk, meaning containing and caring for the problem before you have to look for a cure. Manually, you would have to set up a meeting, break down each and every detail of the problem into various balance sheets, emails, and other documents that can be pretty time consuming and tedious. Whereas if you already have a risk management solution devised, all the relevant stakeholders can be sent notifications from within the system. The discussion regarding the risk and its possible solution can take place from within the system and the upper management can supervise as needed and approve the proposals that are coming by. There is a centralized framework that everybody has access to and thus the communication regarding the risk and the action is prompt and clear. The fifth step is monitoring and reviewing the task. This is essentially having to foresee and manage the risks that will always be present. These threats, for example, can be market risks and environmental risks, and for these tasks, a separate individual has to be assigned and responsible. These professionals must make sure that they keep a close watch on all risk factors. Under a digital environment, the risk management system monitors the entire risk framework of the organization. If any factor or risk changes, it is immediately visible for everyone. Computers are also much better at continuously monitoring risks than people. Monitoring risks also allows your business to ensure continuity. We can tell you how you can create a risk management plan to monitor and review the risk. The difference between a manual and a digital risk analysis framework is merely one factor, efficiency. All the other rubrics stay the same, but it is without debate a fact that the digital variants are much better in performance. They are well-programmed and equipped to assess and handle modern-day problems as well, or novel problems that might not have been a problem before. This is especially relevant as of the last two years, ever since the COVID-19 pandemic hit. But for anyone who's wondering, why even is a risk analysis important, especially as a business in its early years? Let's tell you a simple reason. The reason you would want to incorporate a proper risk management solution based on a concrete risk analysis is because, as a goal, you should be looking to maximize your gains through maximized risk management evaluations. These evaluations and assessments help businesses truly understand their own capabilities, strengths, and vulnerabilities. The more evaluations you have, the more you know your business. You could improve your business function and framework on every evaluation, especially targeting areas that might need a bit of fine tuning. The benefit you get with a digital risk management framework is that you have a more efficient and organized workflow and could help simplify the evaluation, reporting only what needs to be addressed. These are especially important before making a big change in the company. And before you panic, let us clarify when you should actually be making a risk analysis. It should be in situations where, when you're planning projects, to help you anticipate and neutralize possible problems, when you're deciding whether or not to move forward with a project, when you're improving safety and managing potential risks in the workplace, when you're preparing for events such as equipment or technology failure, theft, staff sickness, or natural disasters, and when you're planning for changes in your environment, such as new competitors coming into the market or changes to government policy. Please know that risk management based on risk analysis is practiced by all businesses, big or small, because it is an essential step in identifying, evaluating, tracking, and improving the risk mitigation process in the business environment. The way to ensure the growth of a business is to stabilize it and all its capital. Managing and assessing the risks that come with your business model is a crucial step to make sure your business is in a state of equilibrium. And that is how you make sure your business flourishes. And that's all for today, folks. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like these. See you next time.